people, Scott X1307 back again with my latest flea market haul. I uh, went to flea market uh, again uh, this past Saturday, uh, March 7th. Uh, <clears throat> was a little disappointed. Uh, there wasn't a lot of people setting up outside, not a lot of people um, walking around. Wasn't that cold. Um, I don't know what was going on. Um, I'd planned to, originally planned to set up a table and sell some stuff that I'd in storage, but um, you know there wasn't enough people out there to really make it worthwhile, so I didn't do that. I uh, did go to the Comic Guy. Only had about twenty bucks or so to spend, um, so picked up a few things. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it was about nine or so when I got there, and uh, well. All the early birds had already been in, raided all the Silver Age books. Um, like the guy said, he had some pretty neat stuff. Uh, four and five dollar books. But uh, I guess I'll never know what that what, what they were. Somebody got to them before I did. But I did manage to pick up some pretty neat stuff. Got um, more quarter books uh, than, than usual, or than I have been lately. And... Uh, I only got about uh, four priced books this week. Found some pretty neat stuff, nonetheless. Uh, also, I've got a couple of books uh, from Tom Ryan. Uh, these were some awesome things he found uh, in his local area. Um, so I'll show that first. This is Nexus number one from the Capital Comics series. Uh, this is the. Uh, the, the color series. Uh, there were three issues, I believe, that came out first. They were uh, more magazine size, black and white interiors. And then uh, they started over with the number one in uh, color. But uh, I had never seen these. Um, they're not super expensive or anything, just uh, really hard to find, at least in my area. And I, he was able to find uh, this one, number one here. Great. Uh, Steve Rube cover and also number two another awesome Steve Rube cover uh, and that was freaking awesome to find those um, hopefully uh, be able to find more of that series from Capitol but, uh, we will uh, we'll see what the future holds uh, next, uh, start off with the uh, quarter books, uh, and uh, thanks again, Tom, for uh, those Nexus books. Like I said, those I've, I've never seen those out around me. Uh, only find issues from the first comic series, um, uh, the first first comics company. So uh, that was that was freaking sweet. And uh, your books will be going out Monday. Uh, then quarter books picked up at the flea market. I grabbed Infinity Inc. number seven. Uh, Roy Thomas, and Jerry Ordway. Uh, it's a pretty neat cover. You got looks like uh, Earth Two or Golden Age Superman. Uh, looks like they beating the crap out of Power Girl. <clears throat> um, that's the only DC book I picked up in the quarter bins. Uh, I only got a couple of indie books this week. A lot of Marvel stuff. Unfortunately, he's not getting a lot of um, <clears throat> older books. A lot of uh, 80s, 70s, and 80s stuff, which I like. Uh, it's uh, mostly um, 90s and early 2000s uh, I'm finding there now. I did happen to find, luckily enough, another issue of Scout. Uh, this is uh, number 16. Uh, this is a special 3D issue, and you know... I didn't even check to see if it has, yep, 3D glasses are still included. Oh, look at that. Make your eyes and your brain hurt. No, don't look at that. But that's uh, that's cool. Um, you know, for a quarter, I usually don't even check books. Um, didn't even think about that. I'm glad the uh, glasses are included. Um... This is a really neat series by Timothy Truman, and uh, getting 
getting hard to find more issues at my flea market but I was glad to come across that and uh, the only other indie book I picked up uh, Grendel number 18 I believe it's also got a mage backup feature which is pretty cool I'm slowly working this run down uh, to completion and it doesn't want to stand up piece of crap just kidding All right. Next, we'll go into uh, a good bit of Marvel stuff. These next issues, I thought were really cool to find. Uh, these are all uh, World War Hulk tie-ins. Uh, Incredible Hulk number 106. Um, number 107 is fighting Hercules on the cover. And number 108. Those are pretty cool. I believe, uh, I believe I already have a copy of 106 somewhere, but I couldn't find it. So, uh, you know, I'm glad I picked it up. And for 20 cents, uh, yeah, doubles never hurt. Uh, and then I was very surprised to find these next two issues. Uh, World War Hulk number one of five from the limited series. It's a freaking awesome cover there. Uh, and also got issue number three. I believe they're first both. They're both first printings. Another freaking awesome cover there. Hulk picking a tank. He's got missiles coming in at him. Really, really cool. And uh, so I'm whittling down the. World War Hulk issues slowly. And, uh, what I've read so far is really cool. You know, Hulk fighting the entire Marvel universe basically. And then I found some really neat uh, Silver Surfer stuff. Um, picked this up. Uh, first thing I noticed, uh, you know, of course, is Silver Surfer, and then a Michael Turner cover. Uh, it's the first time I see Michael Turner. Uh, this artwork on Silver Surfer and it looks pretty badass. Uh, this is Silver Surfer in Thy Name number one, written by Simon Spurrier. Haven't heard anything about it, but I was able to find the full four issue uh, series, so I picked it up. Here's issue number two. Not a Michael Turner cover, but still a nice looking cover. Good painted style there. I like the cosmic background. Uh, and here's issue number three. Not particularly fond of that cover, but uh, you know, uh, complete the uh, the whole series. So, and here's issue number four. And this cover is a little bit better. Um, the interior art is uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, looks very looks digitally drawn to me. Uh, of course, you know, all the color and everything is digital nowadays, but this looks like digital art as well. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty good detail. Um, figures are kind of uh, a little long and skinny. But, uh, not familiar with this artist, uh, Tan Ing Huat. But, uh, you know, pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, all four issues of that limited series. And I also picked up uh, Silver Surfer uh, Super Size Annual Number One. Um, this is pretty cool. It's got uh, Icarus of the Eternals and the Super Scroll on the cover. It's part of the Evolutionary War, which ran through all the annuals of uh, uh, that year. It was uh, '88, I believe. Yeah, 1988. Well, that was pretty cool. And then also picked up, uh, and these are last and quarter books. Um, uh, and this is part of the uh, Ron Friends run on uh, Mighty Thor, uh, issue 393, 394. I really like that cover there, it's pretty cool. Uh, 395. And 396 uh, is fighting back to back with Black Knight. 
and those are pretty cool. And these are all in pretty good shape. Um, this one's got a couple of little stains on the cover, but uh, not bad for a, uh, you know, 80s uh, white background. Pretty good shape. And the Silver Surfer issues, I was surprised they're not being bagged and boarded. Um, they're still in, you know, very fine shape. One little small crease down here on this corner, and that's about the worst of those. Um, I think one has a small little water spot on the side. Yeah, right here, you can barely see. But, uh, yeah, for 20 cents, you know, condition is not the biggest thing with me. Um, uh, priced books, um, I found this was 50 cents, and, uh, the thick little book why does batman carry shark repellent and other amazing comic trivia it's got a list by mark miller dave gibbons jeff johns uh i like the the little uh things on the cover um the art on the cover it's funny looks like wonder woman and devo um pretty neat and there's uh you know batman with a shark repellent spray uh, looking forward to reading that. I'm sure, it's going to be a good laugh. And then I picked up some pretty neat stuff. He had this up on the wall. Um, there's no difference in the prices of the books in, that he has in his uh, boxes or on the wall. Uh, they're all generally the same prices. But uh, it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures number five. Uh, this is from, um, I think they had like a three issue mini series of this. And they started over with another number one to a regular series. Uh, but uh, this issue number five here was the first story that wasn't based on the cartoon uh, series. And it's also the first appearance of, and that's why I picked this up, this character. I had this figure since I was probably, I don't know, 12. Uh, I always thought it was neat. When I was young, these bright colors uh, were really... Uh, attractive on toys and stuff and uh, this was one of my favorite turtles figures uh, for some reason because he's a manta ray I believe his name is um, Rayman or uh, something like that manta manta man something um, but I believe this is his first appearance and uh, since I already had the figure I figured I would uh, pick it up as well I was going through the boxes and I did I passed up a couple of issues there wasn't a lot of like eye popping stuff uh, in the price books um, uh, I did there were a couple of uh, Thor issues I think 157 and 163 they were in pretty rough shape and they were like six dollars a piece mm, I just I didn't have the money for them even at 25 percent off which would have made them probably uh, you know less than four dollars each but um i just I, I didn't have the money for it i said only about 20 uh, 20 bucks so um i did pick this up store 203 um really like this cover picture frame cover the uh the black border and to be uh um you know from the 70s uh, bronze age book this black border is still in really good shape um a couple of little spine ticks here nothing extremely bad no spine roll corners are still pretty sharp um, a little softness on this one the edges are good pages are um, off white to cream but uh, about what you expect from you know a book that's uh, 30 to 40 years old um, but still really great shape it was five bucks 25 percent off uh, that one I couldn't pass up uh, he said the other two were in much rough shape. One had a spine split of about an inch right at the top. Uh, and they were all creased on the sides and corners and had some really bad spine wear on both. And one of the covers was really rubbed and kind of faded. And I just I, I couldn't couldn't pay that for them. Uh, and that's the Marvel books. And picked up uh, these last two. These are DC. Uh, I grabbed this uh, Justice League 122. Uh, I don't nothing really significant about it and just uh, it says Aquaman is dead and there's his gravestone thought it was pretty neat I'm pretty sure he doesn't actually die in this book but uh, you know I picked it up anyway and uh, <clears throat> you know he said just like the cover 
it's in really good shape only a couple of uh you know a few little small spine ticks no bad creasing or anything like that the worst thing as you can see here is a little little color bleed through from the inside of the cover where it's a little pink but uh, again to me that's you just have to expect that sometimes um on these uh older books and uh this is a looks like a mike grell cover if i'm reading that right really cool really cool and this last book I'll be honest, I've never seen any of this series out in the wild, um, in, in boxes or anything. I've only seen a couple of issues, and they're always, uh, you know, in the, the comic book stores, and they're in the glass case, or they're up on the wall. <clears throat> but uh, uh, this is a really, really awesome Gil Kane cover, so I had to pick this up. It's from uh, late 60s. It's Captain Action number 3. Uh, it was six bucks again 25 percent off you can see somebody originally wanted 55 dollars for it and i think it's in pretty pretty damn good shape um i'm gonna take this out and look at it this back cover is still still uh, pretty white a little off white a little rubbing here um, not too bad tier pages are uh cream to uh slightly tan um not not extremely bad you see the edges are still nice and sharp corners are still pretty good a little soft no major spine wear just a few uh few little spine ticks it does have this mark here which is actually looks like a printing fold it's on the back and it feels less it's not it's not a crease really it is uh the paper is slightly folded under itself which i have seen on several books uh happens during printing and uh, it's hard to tell the difference but if you look real close and i'm sure the camera doesn't bring it out if you look real close so it's you can see the paper is just it's slightly folded underneath itself so i think that's a printing error not a crease um not that it would matter to cgc or anything i'm sure but other than that Pretty good shape. Like I said, freaking fantastic uh, Gil Kane cover. Um, Giordano inks. Could have, could find a better inker, but still, Gil Kane's art comes through nice. Colors are still nice and bright. So definitely couldn't pass that up. <clears throat> Only issue of Captain Adam that I have, uh, action that I have. And like I said, it's the first time I've seen a Captain action book. Um, at the flea market or you know not in a glass case or something like that from this uh, series from the 60s and that my friends is it pretty small haul like i said uh, uh spent right at 20 bucks um picked up a couple of things um for my girlfriend um she gave me money for those so i don't count that out of my budget which is cool uh she had to work so i just picked her up um some Conan books he had and uh, she was pretty happy so uh, yeah not the greatest flea market haul but uh, certainly not my worst I would say let me uh, you guys let me know what you think appreciate all comments and uh, anything like that so uh, yeah that'll do it thanks again everybody and thanks again Tom uh, for these for the awesome uh, Capital Comics Nexus issues, the first two from the color series. Um, that's that just that's fantastic. It, it blew me away when you texted me and said you had found those. Um, I didn't think I would be able to find those without going on the internet. I uh, said they're not super expensive or anything. Just um, a little harder to find than the uh, first comics uh, company series. So that was awesome. All right, guys, uh, gearing up to uh, go to SC Comic Con here in a couple of weeks. Unfortunately, there's not any real, real big, huge guests there. I think Dave Dorman's probably the biggest name they're going to have there. Um, but uh, still looking forward to getting some stuff signed there and meeting some more local artists. Hopefully picking up some, a couple of more neat prints to bring home. So uh, I look forward to that. All right, I'll stop rambling. You guys take care. Thanks for watching. 
like, comment, subscribe below if you feel like it. If not, that works too. Thanks for watching again, everybody. And uh, y'all take care. Till next time, keep reading those books. Later.